Hi, my name is Rob Bentz. I'm an instructor at Dunwoody College of Technology. We're going to uh, take on part two here of our subnetting series and actually do the work of taking an IP address and subnetting it down. Um, we're going to break a class C address and uh, what the process is going to reveal here is that we're going to take one logical network and divide it into several other networks and that'll uh, have some benefits and some drawbacks to that. So uh, the mathematics of it here can be a little bit weird and uh, I'll take you through some of that. That's the hard part. Uh, the benefits and the drawbacks, that's the easy stuff. So let's go through the hard part here and uh, take a look at an IP address and cover a couple of rules uh, that revolve around the idea of the IP addresses in addition to some of the information we learned in part one. Um, when we look at an IP address, we know that the subnet mask will divide that IP address into a network ID and a host ID portion. And there's a couple of rules that revolve around this idea. When we take a look at the host portion when it's been masked, masked off, and we know, um, you know what the network portion is and the host portion is, take a look at the host portion, we can determine a few things just by the numbers themselves. So the first rule is that all zeros in the host section indicate a network ID. That's a, uh, a pretty critical rule there. Um, a network ID is something that we can't assign to a host or a computer, router, etc. cetera. Um, it is the identifying piece of the network. Now, I have an example on the board here. Uh, from earlier, we took the 192.168.1.1 address. And now I've taken that down into the, uh, just the network ID portion. So um, when we're looking at a subnetting problem, we need to see what we've been given. So in this particular case, we've been given a 192.168.1.0 network. And looking at that first rule that I just mentioned, all zeros in the host section identifies a network ID. So the network ID right here is 192.168.1.0. And we know that because of that rule. There are all zeros in the host section. If we take a real close look at how this is dividing out, our subnet mask here and our uh, IP address are both in binary. And you look at the binary of the IP address here in black, and you look at the binary of the mask in blue, and we can see the, the, the dividing line, if you will, between the network and the host portions of the IP address. We, uh, we have all of these strings of ones here in the subnet mask, and then at this decimal point, it stops and it turns to zero. And, and that portion over there is all the, uh, the host portion, and all of this over here becomes the network. And if we did the anding process like we did in part one, we would see indeed that anding this out reveals the exact same number so that we know this is a network ID. And that's because of the rule that all zeros in the host section indicate a network ID. Now the other side of that, the other important rule that we need to know is what if we have all ones in the host section? Um, if I were to turn all of these to a one, in the host section here. Again, these here, these zeros in the mask are uh, what help us identify the network ID and the host ID. This being the network ID, this is the host ID. Over here, the host stuff, if I have all ones in that area where the subnet mask is zero, that indicates a broadcast ID. So that becomes important here in a little bit in the subnetting aspects when we have to figure out where uh, these networks will divide themselves and. Um, become other networks. Now, if it's not, if we look at an IP address scheme and we don't have a nice clean cut like an all zero deal or an all one deal, whatever's left then, the only thing that it could be is a valid IP address, which means that it's something that we can assign to a host or a computer or a server or a router, a printer, etc. So, um, the process of subnetting is actually using some of these rules and uh, kind of bending them a little bit, if you will. What we're going to do here is take these prefixed ideas from the class A, class B ranges. This happens to be a class C address. And we're going to borrow some bits over in the host section to create more networks. 
See, at this point, with what I've been given here, I have one logical network. And that may be fine for some environments, but in some environments, we need more than one logical network. And because of what I've been given, I only have one. So I need to somehow make more. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to make some more logical networks out of this, uh, this environment that uh, we have here. So subnetting is the process of borrowing bits out of the host section of an IP address. And this is the host section out here. So what we're actually going to do is we have this really nice dividing line here right now. We're going to change that. We're going to take this dividing line of our mask that tells us this is the network and this is the host and move it over a little bit and kind of blur the line some. Um, it makes all of the decimal stuff look kind of weird and blurry and uh, doesn't make a lot of sense unless you understand what's going on at the binary level. Now, there's a couple of inf uh, uh, formulas here that we need to know. It's actually one formula that works on both sides of the fence before we begin anything. And that is this 2n minus 2 uh, formula. And we can determine how many networks we need out of this and how many bits we can borrow. It also will tell us how many unique host addresses that we can get out of the, uh, the new subnetted environment that we've created. So in the formula itself, the n is a power, and it's a power of 2. So one of the things that I really recommend that you do when you start this process and you're learning it for the first time, and I use this too, create a grid of all the powers of 2 up to about 16. So you do 2 to the 1 equals 2, 2 to the 2 equals 4, and so on and so on until you get all the way up to 2 to the 16. And that will help you solve the equation a whole lot faster because all you have to do is cross-reference over to that grid and you can figure out what that n value is going to be pretty quickly. Another grid that I like to create to help this process is a, is a mask grid. Um, you start with a mask of 255 and all the ones turned on. And you work your way all the way down to where you have a mask of 128. And, and I'll show you what that looks like here in a little bit. Uh, when it makes sense to show that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this address space that we've been given and we're going to divide it into six logical networks. So the need here, we need six logical networks. And what we have to do is figure out through our formula that I just showed you how many bits we got to move into the host section to make that happen. So here's how that sets up. We don't know the number of bits, and that's n. That's that power that we need to figure out. Um, but we do know how many networks we need. So the unknown is n, and that's the number of bits. That's what we got to figure out how we're going to move this way. How many bits are we going to move that way? And that's a power of 2. And what we do know is that we need six logical networks. So that, that's out here. That's the, the solution to this. Um, but we have this variable that we don't know what that is. So through some simple algebra here, I'm just going to solve this quickly and add two to both sides Whoops. and see that what I really need is some power of two that is equal to eight in this particular instance. In some of the subnetting problems, you'll see it doesn't come out nicely. You need to figure out something of a power of 2 that is greater than, than this number here. But this is going to work out great. If we take a look real quickly at a, at a grid, 2 to the 1 is 2, 2 to the 2 is 4. You start to see right here at 2 to the 3 that that solves this equation here. n value is 3. So what does that tell us? n equals 3. Great, fabulous. Now what? Um, that 3 is how many spaces we're going to move in this bit value here. So we actually have to move this dividing line 3 bits this way, right here. And what we do with the subnet mask is turn on the, the bits to, to mask that stuff off. So what we have to do is flip these 3 to a 1 and figure out what that decimal value is because the, the computer and the configurations that we use, the things that we type in, 
they all use this decimal format. So we have to figure out what that decimal format is. So what this number is going to look like is really 1, 1, 1. And then we have all these zeros out here left over that we have to uh, determine what that entire 8-bit space is going to be worth in a decimal value in order to type these things in. So again, this is where that grid that I was telling you about comes in handy. Uh, if you have a reference of all of the subnet mask possibilities, and the only possibilities that there can be are these, you start with, you turn all the bits on. And there can be no breaks in the IP mask uh, in terms of the ones. We couldn't go 111000 and then 1111111. You can't do that. You're breaking rules when you do that. So really, this grid is going to have all ones on, and then you start with the zeros, and you just start clicking them back until you have only one and all zeros. So what we're looking for here, oops, is this value. And we'll work down this grid here just so that you can see what that would look like. And maybe double check the one that you're building right now if you're making one. So I've found the number here, but I'm just going to complete this grid so that you can see the whole thing when it's done. Just in case you want the whole thing for reference. Now, you should be able to figure this out in binary um, on your own, what these values would be. To become very quick at this, that, that's almost essential. So earlier, we determined that we needed three bits. And the next step in the subnet process, after you figure out uh, how many bits you need to borrow, you need to figure out what the new mask is going to be. And that's what this grid is going to help us figure out. Again, the first portions of that mask are fixed. So this uh, first three octet is fixed. Those are going to be 255. So what we're really focusing in on is what that last octet is going to be. What's that decimal value? We need to be able to type in a decimal value in the configuration. And you find that it's right here. So this value goes on top of what we already have meaning the 255, 255, 255, 0 values that we were given in the first place. So our new mask, which is the second step of the subnetting process, is going to be completely 255, 255, 255, 2.24. Now, once we know that, we can start to figure out where all of the different networks are going to be. Um, there's a couple of shortcuts to do this, but I'm going to show you how to do this at the binary level so that there's a, a binary understanding to it. Um, and it's really not that difficult. It's just converting binary back to decimal and counting in binary. It's really as simple as that. You've got to count it out in binary and then convert it back using all eight bits in that octet so that we get the appropriate decimal number. So if we know that this is the new mask, and we know where our dividing line is here on this last octet. I'm going to focus right in on this last octet. Okay? Um, this dividing line actually goes all the way up through the, the IP address itself. So what we're looking at here is the math of being able to break down the last portion of that. And in the next section, I'll take you through that process um, and walk through the entire binary pieces of breaking down that last octet.